Hi guys, it's Blackie and welcome back to the channel. Okay, today continuing in the ground pounder series of canteen cup cooking, we're going to go into the one that I promised, which is going to be bacon, eggs, and grits in a canteen cup. Now this is going to be a little bit of a juggling act. And you, all the steps up to this have been leading up to this, so to speak, where you've got to control your temps, You've got to do a kind of shift from one to the other fairly rapidly. Otherwise, you can cook each one of the components separately, but they're either you got to eat them separately or something's going to be or a lot of stuff's going to be cold before you ever get it all done. So you got to kind of dance it around to try to all get it done at the same time and be still warm at the same time. Now, let's begin with the meat, bacon. If you're wanting to use raw bacon, then it needs to be A, you're bringing it out of a cooler, or B, it's the time of the year that you can carry such things and it not worry about spoilage. Okay? Be very aware of that. Don't be toting out raw bacon, carry it all day in a pack, and then think you're going to cook it and be okay. Because trust me, you'll get sick. You've got to be able to have it, you know, exactly the way you want it, and it's got to be food safe. Okay? For this, I'm going to be using pre-cooked bacon, but I'm going to show you the same technique I would use if it was raw bacon. Cooking raw bacon in a canteen cup, there's only one method that really works, and that's deep frying. So what you're going to have to do is, I'm going to walk you through this procedure in a second, so we're just discussing what we're going to do, so when I'm doing them high speed, you can see it and already know why and how I'm doing this. You would take your canteen cup and you'd put just a little bit of water in the bottom of it. About like the thickness of a number two pencil. Okay? Quarter inch, something like that. You're then going to take your bacon and cut it up into small pieces and put it into that. You're going to bring the water to a boil and while it's boiling you're going to add the bacon. This is going to do two things. One, it will begin cooking the bacon. And two, it will start washing the grease out of the bacon. The water is evaporating. There's not much water. And so as the water evaporates, more of that grease is coming out of the bacon and it transitions to just being bacon grease. The water evaporates out and now you're deep frying the bacon, making real crunchy little pieces in it. Therefore, you need a way to fish the completed pieces out easily. A spoon is really good for this. To be able to pick, push up against the wall and slide it out and make a pile of your cooked bacon pieces, okay? Now once the bacon is complete in that cup, you've got bacon grease. All right, you've taken the bacon out and you remember your aluminum foil you're supposed to be carrying? You make a little bowl out of that and that's what you're going to put your cooked bacon on. Then you're going to transfer that bacon grease into something else if you're planning on reusing. If not, just put it someplace where it's not going to be a problem. But you don't wash out the cup. Then you immediately add water back to the cup and bring it to a boil. That's going to make our grits. You make about, oh, an inch deep. Enough to have enough water to pour and make the grits. Okay? That bacon flavor is going to be in the water, so you're putting bacon flavor into your grits. Now, the grits need to be kept some way so they don't cool off either. Cold bacon is still good, but we're going to heat it up at the end. But the grits, once they go cold, eh, not so great. So you need to come up with a cozy of some form. Now, you, in the old days I used my canteen cup cover that had that furry lining in it. I would simply transfer my grits when I made them into that and roll it down tight as a heat holder. Something like putting a jacket on it. In backpacking it's called a pot cozy. And it's a way of holding the heat. Okay. I have also used my clean socks before where I put one sock inside the other made my grits inside of a quart freezer bag and then put them inside rolled them up and slid them inside that sock to help keep them warm until my eggs are done for this exercise I'm going to use my mesh net shemog and I'll wrap it up in it and hold the heat that way so that it's still good to go when mealtime gets around once I poured the water out for the grits and stirred up and made the grits, I, there should be a little bit of water left in the thing. Le about a quarter inch or less. 
that's what I'm going to crack my eggs into, bring it right back to a boil. That keeps the eggs from burning to the bottom. Again, that water is going to evaporate out. That's the steam coming off of eggs is water. I'm going to crack my two eggs into a Ziploc bag that already has salt and pepper in it. Mash them up, just like you'd put them in a bowl and stir them up until all the yolks are broken its consistency to make scrambled eggs. And then I'm going to pour that into the cup and immediately start stirring. On and off to regulate the heat. See, so it doesn't burn. Keep scraping the bottom clean all the way around. Now when those eggs are done, they're 99% done, it's done. I'm going to throw the bacon back in there with it and stir it up and let the heat of the eggs and that last moment warm the bacon back up. And then that's what's going to go in my pan and the grits on the other side of it. Okay, that's a walkthrough. Let me get the camera set up to show you and we're going to do it right now. Okay, let's start with some prep. I got my bacon. I got a small cutting board right here. I got some aluminum foil. I've got my bag that has already got my salt and pepper in it and my eggs are wrapped up in aluminum foil. I'm going to be using this aluminum foil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, take that out, make sure the salt and pepper ain't sticking. I'm going to go ahead and crack my eggs and then utilize this aluminum foil to cut up my bacon. Okay. Set that aside for just a second. So go ahead and take your go ahead and take your bag because it's going it's always awkward. It always wants to close up when you're trying to put an egg in it. Go ahead and roll it over so it's a wide mouth. Just like that. Now you can get it in there easier. Now, crack your egg. like that. Dump your egg in there. Okay, do my other one. And put my egg in there. Now remember raw egg is a contaminant. So I do not want to get this on the other food. That's the reason I'm doing it this way. And that salt and pepper, I doubt if you can see it, but right there in a the little bitty corner that's where that salt and pepper's at. And I do have a piece of shell in there. I see it right there. Could get that shell piece out. Now, just start masturating it with your fingers. And this will do just as good as doing it with a fork. And I don't have to put raw egg on a fork. And I then got to clean off before I can eat with it. Yes, I know some people eat raw eggs. I've eaten raw eggs, but more people are sensitive than not, and it's just best not to risk it. Okay, there. Now my eggs are ready to put into operation. Now we're going to take the aluminum foil. We're going to lay it out flat. And we'll put our cutting board in it. This way, whenever I cut, if anything falls off, the aluminum foil is going to catch it. It ain't going on to the dirt or whatever. Now, I would be doing the same thing if this was raw bacon. Even though it's cooked, it is also a little bit um, underdone because you're supposed to microwave it when you get done. Nice big hunk of bacon. And it comes in a Ziploc bag of sorts. I forgot how to open this thing. No, Blackie is not using his glasses, so I am using the foils. So, we're not going to worry about it. WC knife to the rescue. Right out the bacon. Now, we're going to cut this bacon up fine. Probably don't need all that, but hey, you know, it's bacon. Cut this down into bite-sized pieces. Gray man. WC knives, gray man. I know somebody's going to ask that didn't see my video, so I'll just go ahead and say it. Cut 
in the middle and then cut just like that now scoot it out onto the bait onto the aluminum foil light butter. Alright. Pack it up. A little bit of cutting board of some kind makes life a whole lot easier. And go ahead after you cut it up, take your fingers and make sure it is because you know there's how fat likes to say it's cut, but it's not. We don't want this to be a problem. I want stuff I can stir around in the bottom of that cup. Because it like that was stuck together as big on it. Get all that bacon pulled apart. All right. Now, we're done with that. Last thing, we're gonna put our grits into our bag to receive the hot water when we get to that. We want all these stages pre-done because whenever we go to cooking this is going to be quick and I do not want to burn something because I'm fiddling around trying to get the grits open or where did I put that at or, or whatever. Go down the checklist. The eggs are ready to go right there. Ready to go into the hot. Grits are ready to go into the hot. Sealed up. The bacon is chopped up, ready to go in the hot. Now we adjust the camera and we start cooking. Okay, now we're gonna put, remember I said about a pencil's worth of water in the bottom of that canteen. Nope. Yes. I'm gonna put like a pencil's worth of water in the bottom of that canteen. That's how we're gonna heat up the bacon. The bacon will then come out and go back onto the aluminum foil. We will then add water back to this, bring it up to a boil, and that'll make our grits. That will reduce the water, and then we'll cook our eggs in that remaining water, and then we'll add the bacon back in. Got it? Okay. Now, we're gonna be using the Trangia. We're going to be using it on high, so to speak. Just like that. Now we will be using the spatula that I have as part of my set. In an upcoming video, we will do a carving video where I will show you how to make little things for a uh, canteen cup cook set. I like the flat end. Now in a future video, we will take and modify a US Army uh, issue knife into one of these spatulas. You cut off the end, you round the tips, or we're gonna carve one out of, wo out of wood, but that's coming up. Now, having said that, we set that up there, making sure that our stove is well centered and that my handles are not going to get hot. And I'm going to take my bacon and put my bacon into the pot. I got my grits sitting over here to the side and I got my eggs ready to go sitting in the side. And I'm gonna take this aluminum foil and set it to the side to in a minute collect my bacon. That's coming up. Stir it around a little bit. Let that water get hot and let it start rendering the grease out. That little bit on the of the water on the bottom keeps it from burning. Ah, who 
doesn't look who doesn't love bacon? Okay, and as you can see, when I rake it back, it isn't burned to the bottom. So this bacon is fully cooked. Blackie, I like my bacon crispy. Uh-huh. There's a lot of ways you can cook bacon separately than this. All you got to do is drape it over a stick next to a hot fire or something like that and fully cook the bacon and make it as crispy as you want before you ever cook the eggs and the grits. If you want real crispy bacon, do it that way. Simply have it next to your fire over a stick. And there's a lot of videos showing how to just cook bacon on a stick and therefore cook it. This way, since this was pre-cooked bacon, even if it was raw bacon, I'd have cooked it until it's like this. It's ham at this point. It just hadn't turned crispy, which is the way I like it. I don't like crunchy. I like, you know, the bacon flavor, but I don't want it crunchy. So if you want the crunchy, cook it over a stick ahead of time. It's going to take the longest when it's fully done and cook your other components. Now I'm going to transfer this out, put water back in here and bring it back to a boil. I'm going to put it onto my aluminum foil that I got over here on the side. Making sure I get all that wonderful goodness out of there. And then I'm going to pick up my dampener to go back to full boil power. Come on, baby, come on. Just like that. Put it back up there. I'm gonna add water to it. I'm gonna put in enough to be able to do my grits and have a little bit left. So, oh, maybe a quarter of a cup, less than a quarter of a cup, about like an eighth of a cup. And then we're gonna let that come to a boil, and then we'll make our grits next. Meanwhile, the bacon is gonna be wrapped up. And this aluminum foil helps hold the heat, squeezing those ends closed. And then I'm going to take my sh uh, net shemog and I'm going to wrap around it to help hold the heat and keep that bacon warm. Now when the grits come off, I'm going to do the same thing in that bag to help keep them warm. So this is acting as my cozy. It goes over here on the side. Now we let that come to a boil and then I'll be right back with you. Okay, now I've got a low boil going on my water. I'm gonna take my bag of grits, I'm gonna open them up, just like I said before, roll the neck so it makes a wide mouth and I'm not gonna mess this up. Now this is a freezer bag so it can handle hot liquids. I'm going to grab my spoon. I'm gonna add my water into here and I'm gonna stir it up. And then, move that just a grunt further up there so you can see my little table over there a little better there we go all right i'm gonna add my water in here and then i'm going to stir it up and make it the right consistency getting myself off of that flame doing so trying not to burn myself not that much go right back on there Making sure it's balanced. Go to stirring my grits. Make sure my grits are right. Yep, they're good. All right, now I'm going to seal this up. Squeezing the air out. Just like that. I'm going to take my pot cozy that I've created, unroll it down here then with my bacon taco, it's still there. Now I'm going to put my grits right beside of it and roll the whole thing up to keep it nice warm. Yes, you can do this with a shirt, whatever. All right, now my water's boiling real good right there. I need a little less water, to be honest. So I'm going to pour my water down just a little. 
just like that. And I'm gonna put my regulator back on to drop my heat down. That handle done got hot. That heat coming off there will radiate up those handles if you're not careful. All right, now with just a little bit of water down there in the bottom, I'm gonna let it come back to a boil, and then I'm gonna pour in my eggs. goodness down in there see it's already starting to cook now I'm gonna start stirring and the water will start evaporating out of it this is gonna take probably about three minutes keep stirring around the edges because that's where it's going to want to harden up is on the edges I may have had too much water trying to do this without my glasses I think we're going to be alright. That water's evaporating out. It's starting to thicken down. Alright, doesn't burn my fingers. I need to get something for that handle. Okay. As you can see now, that water's evaporating out and it's turning into scramble egg. Just keep going. Keep moving it. That water will start disappearing. When you get like this, you got to keep it in motion. Just keep stirring. Don't let it harden up. If it does, it'll burn. See? We get to a point like this, now you can get rid of some of that water by tipping it and just water will run down. Get rid of that extra water over here to the side. Now it's just egg. Just another second and we're going to be done. That's it. Scrambled eggs. In a canteen cup. And notice the bottom of my cup ain't burned black. Alright, let me deal with my stove right quick. And put it out. Closing that little door. like that putting it out I'll set that down on the ground out of the way now we're gonna bring the plate in our eating utensil get that out of the way that's for another day get that out of the way that's for another day now over here on this side, over here on this side we're going to have our eggs. Now 
not much to clean up. Okay, now I've set that hot cut down. Lay that down. Now out of my pot cozy over here, unroll it, it's still hot. I got my grits, and there's my warm bacon. All right, shift spoon around to this side. Cut up my eggs a little bit. You didn't think they were going to turn that way, did you? You thought it was going to be a slurry, and it's going to be, wow, that's still warm. Okay, good insulation. Now my big wad of cooked bacon. Kind of like ham at this stage. Roll that right there. And yes, it's still hot. Hot enough you don't want to grip this aluminum foil too tight. i put it that way. And then finally, this side over here. And yes, that's still hot. I may have to use my glove. <laughs> come on, back. Come on, back. Shake it all out. There. There you have it, guys. Eggs bacon and grits in a canteen cup. So, grits, bacon, eggs, all in a canteen cup, all cooked, ready to go and eat. Mm. And the bacon is fully cooked and tender. For us old silver wolves that ain't got teeth worth a dang, I can eat it, and of course the grits. There you go. A whole breakfast done in an order. <laughs> Excuse me. A whole breakfast done in an order. You heat up to cook the bacon first. If you want crispy, simply drape it, drape it over a stick and put it right beside a real hot fire with a lot of flame, and it will cook till it is nice and crispy. Just like that. you just gotta. You drape it over the stick that way and it's hanging on this side and you got to turn it around and get the other side and you may need to flip the bacon over. Go look online. There's lots of videos on YouTube on how to cook bacon in a, uh, on a stick beside a fire. I cook my bacon first if I'm going to do that. If I'm going to cook raw bacon in the canteen cup, I do it exactly the same way. I just put a little bit of water in the bottom. I keep stirring it, chop it up real fine, and let it transition to where it's deep frying the bacon. You can get it crispy that way too. But this is already pre-cooked bacon. But you can take raw bacon and do the same thing. Just got to keep it moving. Okay. Once that's done, you create the grits or the oatmeal or whatever it is. Then with a little bit of water left in, and if I would had my glasses, I would have been close. But I was better. Dump the eggs in and start cooking them. Just start stirring them around. When they're three quarters of the way done, you'll, you can separate any existing extra water. You can tip it in water or run, but not eggs. And that's when you can tip out and pour out any extra order and keep stirring. Otherwise, you're going to burn it. I got a yellow jacket around me. But he wants some breakfast, too. So, I hope you enjoyed this, guys. The pot cozy keeps everything warm until it's all done at the same time. That's the trick to it. <sighs> Get away from the yellow jacket. He wants him some grits. So, take your time. Organize, think through your menu of exactly what you want to do and how. You bacon, how you want to cook. Practice at home, get it exactly like you want. Now, Blackie, I don't have a, a U.S. Army mess kit lid to actually eat it in. What would you do if you didn't, like I've done before? When I got it all done and them, day, them eggs was hot, I put everything back into it and stir it up. That's one of the reasons I dice this stuff up so fine. Is because I can just stir it up and eat it straight. And make a egg grit bacon bowl in there and eat it all out of one cup. You can do that too. Till next time guys. I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day guys.